everyone, it's Rose, and welcome back to Cheap, Lazy, Vegan, and another video. Today we have another Vegan Talks video where I discuss a topic regarding veganism, and today's topic is going to be the truth about veganism, the pros and cons of a vegan lifestyle. Of course, as much as I want everyone to go vegan and I think that veganism is the future, I think it's still very important to be transparent and talk about, you know, the real struggles and things that people may experience as a vegan, as well as be a little bit modest about the overselling of veganism. But at the same time, I wanna talk about the benefits because there are many benefits and I think a lot of people have a misunderstanding about veganism. I've now been vegan for almost five years and I've been mostly plant-based for about eight years. So it has been some time, but I have also spent the majority of my life not being vegan. So I'm going to talk about some of the pros, some of the cons, not necessarily related to me. I did do a separate video where I talk about how veganism has changed my life. I'll link that video down below if you guys are interested in that. This one's going to be a little bit more of a general pros and cons list of a vegan lifestyle. All right, guys, so you can grab a beverage and we can have a chat. By the way, merch link in the description box. So let's start with the pros because we wanna be positive. Okay, we wanna start with the good stuff. And the first pro, I guess, would be that it is great for the environment and great for animals, beneficial for animals and the environment. Although it's hard for me to say that it's beneficial for the animals and the environment because I feel like it's not really beneficial. It's more like just neutral. You know, not causing harm isn't a benefit. It's just not causing harm and it's just leaving them alone. But because the other side is so grotesque and there's so much animal abuse going on in the animal product industry, not causing harm is now considered a benefit and a pro and a service to the animals, even though, I mean, we're not really doing much else other than just leaving them alone or attempting to leave them alone. And it's also hard for me to say that this is like a benefit because this is like the reason, you know, it's not really a benefit. It's the reason that you go vegan, the reason that you, you know, take that next step. Because let's face it, if you ask anybody on the street, if they like animals or if they love animals, they will say yes. So it makes absolutely no sense to support an industry that abuses and harms animals and kills animals. You wouldn't kill a dog because you say you love dogs. So the opposite cannot apply to other animals. You can't say you love dogs, therefore you can't kill them. But then at the same time say you love animals therefore you eat animals it just doesn't make sense we are very heavily disconnected from what is happening in this world and therefore veganism kind of brings you back to your core values that we all have it's not that me and another non-vegan has different values because if you ask us the same thing do you love animals we will answer yes both of us unless you're a psychopath i don't know so, oh my gosh, I've just went off on a tangent. So what I'm saying is I like it is pro, it is good for the animals, it is good for the environment, something that we all usually say that we care about. Um, it's just kind of actually putting that into action instead of just saying, oh, I love animals, oh, I love the environment or I wanna save the environment, but let me just do all of this damage. And I'm not blaming anybody because I think that this is like an issue of we just are products of a society that has created these problems. And we are now supposed to take on the burden of trying to change it, even though it is very difficult for us to change it, which I will get to in a second. I guess the next pro would be just being more aligned with your morals and your values and ethics. Like I said, if you ask people, do you love animals? Most people will say, yes, I do. And if you ask them, would you contribute to animal cruelty? Do you believe in animal cruelty? Most people will say no, yet 99% of the population is continuously supporting an industry that is heavily, heavily, heavily cruel to animals. It is the most cruel to animals that you could possibly get. So there is that disconnect between your actual values and your actual morals and your actions. And this creates a lot of conflict, whether you know it or not, probably in your head, which is why a lot of people lash out against vegans. A lot of people go against vegans because they probably personally feel conflicted because their actions are not aligning with their morals. So instead they have to lash out and come up with whatever excuse they can to justify their behavior, which is unjustifiable according to their own values. I'm not even saying it's unjustifiable. When you're sitting there saying you don't believe in animal cruelty, but you're continuously supporting an industry that is filled with animal cruelty, there will be a conflict there. So for your own peace in mind, it is very, very good. Veganism is a very good way to have at least a little bit 
of peace in mind knowing that you are getting closer to your values not just in what you say but in what you do and in what you contribute to Whew. you know it's just it's almost comedic the way that we are so hypocritical if it wasn't so tragic it would be comedic there's all these viral videos of you know one person maybe abusing an animal maybe kicking a dog or kicking a cow or burning an animal, which is all horrible and horrifying and terrible. You have that and there is a public outrage and everyone is upset, everyone is yelling threats at this person, everyone's saying burn this person alive, and yet there are literally billions, billions of animals being tortured and killed every single freaking day and you are upset at this one dude. And not only that, you are actively contributing to the harm of these animals and you are sat there typing about this one guy killing one animal or abusing one animal thinking that you are better than this one guy even though you are contributing to literally the death of billions of animals as well so i mean of course oh my gosh i am getting all militant vegan guys i'm sorry but what I, you know what i'm saying it's just the hypocrisy is unreal guys i'm sure if you actually sat down to critically think about this you will realize the hypocrisy in your own actions and your own words and and what you believe versus what you actually do and i get that it's hard but when you go vegan eventually hopefully soon when you go vegan you will feel a lot more aligned with your values which is going to give you at least a little bit of a peace in mind this is gonna be a long video i can tell it's already been 10 minutes Next pro is going to be the health benefits or the potential health benefits. I don't want to delve into this too much because like I always say, I don't really want to sell veganism on a health benefit thing because I am not an expert in this field. Although I believe wholeheartedly that a whole foods plant-based diet is going to be a healthy diet for the population. I'm going to leave some links down below. There are many, many, many potential health benefits to following a whole foods plant-based diet. I'm not gonna say a vegan diet, I'm gonna say a whole foods well-planned plant-based diet. I think that when you do it properly and you do it well, you can really heavily benefit from a plant-based diet. There are so, so many studies and so many doctors that are an advocate of this diet and of this lifestyle. So it could be really beneficial for your health if done correctly. Yes. Another thing that I will touch on quickly is that it could potentially help you lose weight if done correctly. So I'm not going to guarantee that a plant-based diet is going to help you lose weight. And I don't think that that is a reason that you should go vegan. I think that you should delve into it deeper, but it could be one of the great side effects of going plant-based. I do not want to sit here and say that I lost a bunch of weight or that it's keeping me really slim because I don't know me otherwise. You know what I mean? Like I went vegan at a certain time and I, since then I don't know me aside from being vegan, if that makes sense. I know past me and present me and that's it. Uh, unfortunately, we can't clone ourselves to compare. <laughs> for a number of reasons, I do believe that it is going to be beneficial for your weight if you follow a plant-based diet that is well-planned and whole foods based. It's, it's hard for me to say because I'm not 100% whole foods based, but I do think that it is easy for me to keep my weight down, relatively speaking, uh, because of a number of reasons. Number one, I'm much more mindful about what I'm eating and I'm not just shoving anything that I can into my mouth because before I used to eat anything anything was on the table so if i'm at work or if i'm at school or whatever and somebody brings cake or muffins or pizza or whatever i'm just eating it all you know what i mean there is no no boundary and now because i know that you know there are certain things that i avoid i'm not even tempted by these these things you know and also just like the nature of animal products they just tend to be higher in um fat and tend to be higher in you know all of these other things that probably contribute to weight gain. I'm gonna leave some links down below for uh, that this kind of topic because clearly I'm not an expert in this, but I know that there are some YouTubers that have talked about this and they ha that have experienced um, some beneficial weight loss. Another thing that a lot of people talk about that, again, I'm not an expert in is acne. 
A lot of people suffer from acne and I have seen many people say that their vegan diet helped them cure their acne or at least improve their the state of their skin. I've seen it many, many times. I think that there are a lot of problems with an animal-based diet, a heavily animal-based diet that contributes to acne, although I am, again, not an expert, but I will link some videos down below if you guys are interested in the acne aspect. Uh, I think one of the biggest problems when it comes to acne is dairy. I think a lot of people eat a lot of dairy, which contributes to a lot of acne. But yeah, this could be something that you might want to think about if you are eating a heavily animal-based diet and you are experiencing a lot of acne. Next pro is that it could help you become a more critical thinker. I think that when we are born into the society as human beings, you know, most of us just kind of follow what's happening and not really question anything. I mean, I was a little bit different. I've always been more of a critical thinker than probably the average, but I still never thought about the choices I make when it comes to food and how it relates to, you know, the greater impact of this world. So I think that when I went vegan, I started to really, really see the world slightly differently and try to question things that happen in the world without just following it uh, mindlessly. Of course, I'm not perfect and I'm still doing things mindlessly uh, without realizing, but at the same time, veganism really, really can help you start to think about things with an independent thought. I think critical thinking is super, super important because that's how change happens. This is how our society progresses into something better or something where it's more equal and we have equal opportunities. Because if we just follow what's happening and not think critically and think, okay, why are we doing this? You know, why is this a thing? Um, if we don't think like this, then Change will never happen because it's so much easier to just continue on whatever we're doing. And the only reason why changes have happened is because of critical thinkers that have decided, okay, maybe this isn't the way we should be doing things and just questioning what's happening. When you start to look at veganism and really, you know, delve into veganism and think about the philosophy behind eating animals and all these things, you start to realize the importance of critical thinking and you start to develop those critical thinking skills that you may have lacked in the past. I think I'm just rambling. Next pro is that it increases your mindfulness and awareness when it comes to your food choices and your daily habits. What I mean by this is it's kind of like similar to the whole critical thinking thing, but a little bit more on a I don't know, personal level, I guess. I don't know. I feel like a lot of us, we live our lives kind of on autopilot and we do things just habitually without really thinking. A lot of things that we do, we're just kind of doing it on autopilot and we're not consciously aware of our choices and what we're doing. So this is probably why we, you know, participate in things that we normally, if we thought critically, we wouldn't participate in things like that. And I think that veganism increases your mindfulness of, okay, the foods, for example, the food choices that you make, instead of just choosing whatever uh, mindlessly, you are making a choice, a mindful choice. You are actually considering options and thinking, okay, this is an active choice rather than an autopilot response. So it really does help you, I think, increase your mindfulness in that sense and increase, I don't even know if mindfulness is the right word, but it really increases your level of consciousness when you are making decisions. Just kind of being more conscious of your actions rather than just doing things because just because everyone's doing it, you know, or just because you are used to doing it. And this last pro is kind of connected to the whole critical thinking aspect, but really just a development of a deeper understanding and a deeper knowledge of what's happening in this world. And the knowledge that you are making at least some level of a difference in the world, I think is a big positive to a vegan lifestyle. A lot of us, we have these existential crises crises. We don't understand what we're doing on this earth. We don't know if there's a meaning to life. And, um, you know, when we actually actively participate or actively remove ourselves from, from participating in something damaging, um, I think that it really does help us kind of, I guess, gain a sense of purpose in life, it gives us a bit of knowledge into the world and a deeper understanding of the world. When we are conscious of not just ourselves and our own bodies and our own little circle and we try to look a little bit beyond that it really gives us a little bit more of a meaning and a little bit more of a purpose in life and 
that's always a good thing. All right, guys, we started off on a positive note and now we're going to move on to the potential cons, guys. There are some difficulties of going vegan. I don't want to sit here and say that it is a walk in the park because, of course, like anything else that requires you to be different from everybody else, it is going to be somewhat of a challenge to some degree. To some people, it will be more of a challenge than to others. So I'm going to go through my list of potential cons or things that you might want to uh, be wary of when going into a vegan diet. Number one con is the difficulty of changing your habits. I think that we as vegans, when we try to appeal to non-vegans and try to sell veganism, even though we have the purest of all intentions, we tend to oversell the easiness of vegan lifestyle and the oversell how easy it is to drop your habits, which it is not easy to get rid of some habits. What we do in childhood, what we do at a very young age is going to impact us for probably the rest of our lives. And this is why the transition phase of a vegan lifestyle is very difficult for a lot of people because if you are habitually used to eating animal products all the time and all of a sudden you drop it, it's not going to be a walk in the park. Our early upbringing in our childhood has a huge impact on our future. And it's the same with the way that we've been brought up when it comes to food, our relationship with food, what we think when it comes to food, what kind of food we were fed as a child, we might be fully attached to as human beings because we're human beings. We're not animals that we can just easily not animals, we're not robots that we can just easily program to behave completely differently. We're human beings and when we do things as children, a lot of that carries over to adulthood and that might result in a very heavy reliance on animal products. This is a real thing and I think that we should acknowledge the difficulty of breaking those habits and I'm not saying it's impossible. A lot of us have done it. I've done it. I've eaten animal products all my life until I went vegan, but there was a large transition phase, a very, very long transition phase. This is why I really heavily advocate for a transition rather than a an overnight going vegan type of scenario. I think that as idealistic as it is, as beautiful as it sounds to go vegan overnight, I think it does not work for a lot of people on this planet. Um, I think there are a select few people where overnight veganism works wonders and they do great. And then there are lots of other people where it just doesn't work and it's okay if it doesn't work. I think that you can gradually change your habits and gradually get used to eating a non not just eating, but following a plant-based lifestyle. Another con is the constant reminder of animal products everywhere. Because we live in this really non-vegan world, you're just constantly going to be bombarded with advertisements, visual signs of animal products everywhere, animal exploitation left, right, and center. You're going to see these things all the time. And not only is it going to bother you because maybe you have changed the way that you see animal products and now you see all of this as disgusting. So it's going to be everywhere. So it's going to bother you. And also if you are somebody that is having a hard time cutting those habits, it will create maybe some sort of a craving because you're seeing these things all the time out of sight out of mind but when you're always in sight of these things it's not going to be out of your mind so it's going to be a big kind of challenge for a lot of people their ability to try and ignore those things because it's everywhere it's probably like somebody that's an alcoholic that's constantly surrounded by alcohol if this person is in a rehab center they are okay because they're not surrounded by alcohol but as soon as you get into the real world and you are surrounded everywhere, alcohol, bars. Imagine that, imagine being dependent on a substance and instead of being able to get away from it, you are constantly reminded everywhere you go that alcohol exists. You know, this product that is damaging to you exists, but it's everywhere. That is difficult. So like it's maybe very similar to animal products because many of us were brought up eating animal products. So a lot of us are very heavily addicted to animal products, especially things like cheese, for example. You're gonna see that everywhere and 
that's gonna be that's gonna be tough but this is why i think that uh the increase in mindfulness is super important increase in awareness of our actions and what we're doing is very important so when we are conscious of our decisions it is a little bit more easier for us to make the right decision not just the decision based on our senses and our impulses another con would be that the adjustment period might be difficult so for some people not for me i have never had a negative at least as far as i know and as far as i'm concerned i've never had a negative reaction to a vegan diet i think the only time that i've had like any sort of negative reaction to it was when i tried to do like a super high carb diet and a very low protein diet um although it wasn't really even a negative reaction it was more of like i was hungry all the time and never really satisfied i've been lucky that i didn't really have any adverse reactions especially when i first started delving into a plant-based lifestyle but i have heard that a lot of people especially those people that are not eating a lot of fiber in their diet to begin with they might experience some uh very negative feelings in their body uh, because our body is are just not used to it these are things to be aware of i'm not sure exactly uh, what most people experience. I think a lot of people experience like digestive issues because of the increase in fiber intake. There are lots of articles and information on the internet about this. So if you want to look that up, I highly suggest that you do so. And this is another reason why I believe in gradual change into a vegan diet, because I think that it can be a very stressing thing for your system to completely switch over to a plant-based lifestyle when your body is not used to it. It doesn't mean that the plant-based lifestyle is not healthy. It just means that your body has been programmed to get used to certain foods and not used to other foods and the next con i can't believe it took me this long to get to this con because i think this is the biggest con would be the lack of social support and the social isolation aspect so essentially the social uh, pressures of uh, being a vegan is huge i think this is one of the main reasons that people fall off the bandwagon because it is very very difficult to live in a way that the majority of the population does not live in veganism is still a very very small movement relative to the population and veganism is still pretty socially isolating depending on where you are in the world and even if you are in a big city you will have the majority of people still eating animal products and still thinking that vegans are a bunch of hippies that live in the forest it's not just the fact that you know you might not have vegans around you all the time but it's just simply you know feeling like you just don't belong in groups and feeling like you're not part of a community and you're just kind of alone out there in the world with your own thoughts and your own values and no one else understands like all of these things are all part of social isolation and this makes veganism very difficult for a lot of people even vegans that have been vegan for a long time might just get tired of uh, being the odd one out you know being the person at the restaurant that asks for a vegan meal and i know that sounds like a very minuscule thing but for a lot of people that could be very taxing on their emotional well-being and i don't think this is something that we should ignore because being social is a huge aspect of human nature and we do things we do horrible things to be socially accepted it's true uh we we alter our behavior depending on the social situation all the time not just with veganism but all the time no matter how much you think that you are a a uh, moral person you might do things very differently given social circumstances and social pressures this isn't something we should ignore this isn't something we should brush uh what, what was the word brush aside i don't think this is something we should brush aside i don't think this is something we should ignore i don't think this is something we should shame people about because this is a legitimate issue you know how people feel when they go to a family gathering and they're the only one that isn't vegan and um they feel awkward because they feel uh, pressured to just follow through with what everyone else is doing. I think these are legitimate concerns. I think it's easy for us to say like, well, what about the animals that are suffering? Which I, I get that. I get it. Logically, yes, it makes sense that the animals that are suffering is a much bigger issue than you feeling awkward at a dinner table, but we are not always logical and we behave emotionally and we act irrationally all the time, depending on the social circumstances. We need to take these things into consideration. And this is why I think it really helps to have communities and it helps to join even online communities or go to potlucks or go to events where you can find other vegans and find people that understand you. But yeah, it's, it's tough. It's tough. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I think it's much easier for some people to navigate through the social pressures and social situations and social isolations, but it's hard for a lot of people at the same time. And um, this leads to the next point, which is uh, kind of like almost harassment or bullying from others that may occur when you are vegan. Uh, this 
is an extreme version of like the whole social pressure thing. Uh, but it does happen. I know vegans get harassed all the time. V vegans are always the butt of every single joke, right? Uh, people make fun of vegans all the time and we can laugh and you know, it's funny sometimes, but there are some times when people really feel bullied and harassed online and also in person by even their family members or their friends or just whoever by strangers. And that can be a very emotionally taxing experience. That is a definite con when it comes to going vegan. You're gonna have to grow very thick skin to deal with these things. I think that the most important thing is that you are fully and 100% believing in this lifestyle. You are much more likely to be confident about this lifestyle and you are much more likely to not let these things get to you. Um, but it is going to be a bit of a challenge for a lot of people. Next con is the inconvenience factor. Obviously when it comes to eating out, it is going to be a little bit more of a challenge as a vegan because you do have to navigate through restrictions and you do have to navigate through a very unvegan world where there might not be many options for you. And you know, just the inconvenience of going out and not being able to buy whatever it is that you need to buy, going through different shops to find a coat that is a vegan coat rather than a down coat. I remember I spent like an hour looking for a vegan coat that didn't have down in it. It's very hard to find here in Canada. Although I have found a brand called Noise. If you guys are looking for a big like warm jacket that is, isn't too heavy and that is very, very warm. If you live in a cold climate, check out Noise. I actually do have a, they gave me a discount code. This isn't sponsored, but they did send me a jacket for free, but I wear it like literally every day and it's amazing. Uh, discount code is cheap, lazy vegan, I believe, and you get 15% off. I'll link it down below. So if you are looking for a vegan, completely animal product free jacket, then definitely check them out. They have really cute items. It's not like ugly either, okay? Um, so yeah, just like the inconvenience factor of, you know, trying to navigate through this world and not being able to go out and buy things whenever you want and find things whenever you want. I think that we are so used to convenience. We're so used to just being able to just get out and just get whatever the hell we want, um, which might be a problem too. But we're so used to that, that, you know, even just a little bit of inconvenience seems like a very big inconvenience in today's modern world. So this is something that you need to navigate through and get used to. And my last con would be that it can be time consuming in the beginning, especially to start to change your lifestyle and learn about veganism. So, you know, we can easily talk and say, well, you need to do your research and you need to uh, find out about this and how this works and how this works and how to plan your meals and all of these things. And it seems easy and it seems great, but I I think that comes from a pretty privileged position of having the time and the resources that are required when it comes to doing that kind of research and that kind of preparation. You know, there are people that are extremely busy and that don't really have much time to even think about changing what they eat, even for themselves, uh, let alone for the greater good of humanity <laughs> and society. I think that is a legitimate con is it is time consuming in the beginning, especially to learn new things and relearn how to eat and, you know, plan your meals and plan what you're, you know, where you're going to eat and, you know, the nutrients that you may be concerned about, like how you're going to get those. And just doing the research in general is time consuming. And I think it's arrogant for us to sit back and say, well, you know, it's worth it for the animals. Like it is worth it for the animals. But at the same time, some people like are just trying to survive and just live their lives. And these are legitimate concerns that people may have. And these are legitimate roadblocks to a vegan lifestyle. So I think it doesn't help when we're like, well, just do your research. I mean, even though I do say that, and I do think that is a legitimate advice to tell people, okay, do your research. But I know for a fact that it can be uh, difficult for people to do their research. I don't know. Maybe they just don't have time. You know, maybe they're working 14 hours a day and taking care of children. Like they don't have time to sit on the internet and search for things for two hours and try to navigate through all the BS on the internet as well. But that's why I try to do what I do on my channel and like show you guys uh, easy ways to, you know, follow a vegan lifestyle and hopefully you get something out of this and you get something out of the recipes that I show you and hopefully I'm I'm doing what I can to give you guys the information without you having to spend way too much time to look for like meal plans and meal ideas and then there's other youtubers out there as well that provide a lot of great information about health and about nutrition so you can watch those videos um, and spend less time maybe doing way too much research on your own if you are someone that doesn't have much time anyways whew, that brings us to the end of this very long video um, I hope you guys found this video helpful um, or interesting whatever it may be I tried to be as transparent and honest as possible I think as a vegan community I think 
we have a responsibility to tell people the real struggles and what happens on a vegan diet and be honest. It's very important to be empathetic toward other humans that may be struggling. I think that it's important to not oversell veganism and sell people on a false uh, narrative. And I'm not saying that we do it with bad intentions. And I'm not saying that necessarily a lot of people are completely overselling veganism, but I've done it before. I know a lot of other vegans uh, try to do it and it's normal. You know, we're biased and we want people to go vegan. We have pure intentions, but sometimes it can get in the way of uh, telling people the real, like honest truth and talk about real issues. And I think it's very important to talk about the real issues because if people are struggling, then they can talk about it and they can say, okay, this is what I'm having issues with and we can provide them support. Telling people that it's going to be a walk in the park and it's going to be super easy and it's going to be super fun and there's going to be no problems at all because you're following the true path of what you're supposed to do and all this stuff. It's just a little bit dishonest in my opinion and I think it's important for us to be transparent and I think I am just speaking and speaking and speaking now and going around in circles. So I'm gonna end this video and I want to, first of all, thank you guys so much for watching. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, Give this video a big thumbs up. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video.